we have a couple guest lecturers here. I know our Apple video. Would you like to come Are on? Are recording? Yeah, you keep, guys keep, can keep going. It's fine. This is not high-quality work we're talking about here. So first off, lock the door. This is the edge of the moon. This is me trying to get a job at Botswana. All right, so I'm going to go ahead. I don't know how to use these things. You probably used them when you were in school, didn't you, on the edge of this? Drafting table? Yeah. All right, so I'm going to go ahead, and my eyes don't work. You've got to have some pretty good light, but I've set this machine up to be zero. So I'm going to kind of draft across here. Uh, this is full size, 132nd. These are architectural, but I'm going to go ahead and draft two units. There's one unit, there's two units. Now what this machine does is you move up along here, keeps everything parallel. You can do exactly the same thing if you are using a set of triangles you can slide along in your desk, and I'll show you that in class. So I'm going to go ahead, I draft two units up, I'm going to draft one unit, two units over, I'm going to draft Better. one unit up. Yeah, make sure, you do. make sure that your scales are the same. One, two, and my scales are not. So I've got something that's relatively square. I've got two lines here now, which I can then kind of do the offset. Because once I've got those lines established, I've got that set up, and I can just go ahead and use the offset command, more or less. And here's the offset that you learn in AutoCAD. You're offsetting or transferring parallel. You can kind of go, what you generally do in drafting is you draw light lines with a different... Uh, hardness pencil. Go out here and dry out a couple light lines. There's a couple great videos out there. And then you come back later with your harder lines. And the same thing here. Once you're using this on a regular basis, one thing you'll notice on these, sometimes if they're out of whack, you don't get actually the square box that you're supposed to. All right. So you've got a box there. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to then think about this idea of a light box, right? So this is going to be a box, and if in the end we might want to think about having uh, another box. This we're going to do a pure box. I'll go ahead. I don't have a, something, a circle here, but I'll go ahead and draft just a hole in that box going through. So I'm going to kind of draft it arbitrarily here. I'm not even measuring the length. I'm just kind of sketching. And you'll see later on with Inventor... Right, you're going to go ahead and do a lot of sketching and then have the program fill in for you what you want in terms of absolute dimensions. But right now, if this hole is there, and I'm looking at more or less the front view here, it's going to project up in the top view. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to project some light lines up for everything that might be seen in the top view. I'm going to left a line there. And these are called construction lines, very light. You'll see you call them in, L in AutoCAD, it'll be X lines. Take it all the way up there. Now what we need to have is a line that's not actually a physical line on your piece, but it's something called the fold line. We'll look at SketchUp what that fold line is, but essentially it's the folding line, the corner line of a glass box. And what you'll notice here, the, the key about that fold line, and we're going to take it out a certain distance here, right? that fold line, your distance here and here has to be the same. So you do that with a set of dividers. I kind of did it arbitrarily here, but I'm going to kind of try to get that right. And if it's not right, it'll be wrong. But what you want to do is you want to kind of make sure that the distance of this piece from the fold line and that piece is going to be the same distance. You'll see why, but they're both folded off of this kind of glass box out in the corner. So um, you've more or less essentially placed your piece inside a glass box that said, I don't have a set of dividers here, but I'll go ahead and try to learn to use this thing. And I printed, I got it one, two, three units. So I'm going to go one, two, three units. And I'll have a line there. I can more or less draft off that baseline, if I would, the baseline going all the way across. Now, based on this here, we don't know on this piece. We do not know the depth of the box. But in this case, again, I'm going to just arbitrarily draft the depth here and make it bare. Once again, in Inventor, you're going to get the general 
design in your sketches and you will change these dimensions very quickly just like this. Go across to the side here and we have this other piece here. Problem is something occurred this hole here can be seen in a dashed line in the projections. So we're going to go ahead and add some dashed lines right here. Those are hidden lines and the same on the other side. Now we would not necessarily have to put them all the way through. If that hole did not go all the way through the box, those dashed lines would not go all the way through. So you have now three kind of hierarchies of lines. You've got the object lines, you've got the hidden lines, and you have the construction lines. Now you get to this kind of interesting thing that you're going to see with the light box, and that is the fact that you're going to have a line, uh, graphically, you're going to have a fold line that is at 45 degrees to this, the general uh, major lines. So once again, we're going to take this thing out, and now we get the value, once again, of this. Don't feel like you need a drafting machine, but if you come across one and you got some space, for five bucks, ten bucks, fifty bucks, good investment. Nice space to work on, stand up, sit down, all that stuff. You've got that there. Now you need another fold line for the right side view. Again, it does not need to be the same distance here, though for many of you I would say for now it would be worthwhile to use the same offset distance for each of these lines off of the fold line. That said, I can put the fold line where I want, just as long as it's parallel. And those fold lines, it's a good idea, a nice idea to keep them in. And you have then another fold line here. This line out here goes away. And then eventually what you're going to do is you're going to need to draft a 45 degree line. What's great about these machines is you can, if you know what you're doing, turn it right up to 45. And that 45 line... is going to go right through there and it's going to call what I call the reverse pool shot line. So that's going to be a reverse pool shot and that when you project a light line going across here it's going to project down. Before we do that we are going to try to get this back to zero. All right, take this machine back. All right, and now project our construction lines across the page, which we probably would have done in the first place anyway. Take that one across. Take this one across. And take this one across. So we've got those lines across there. Now we're going to actually go ahead and reverse pool shot those other lines across by taking this construction line out to that point, marking the point, taking this other construction line out to that point, and marking it. That will be upon the lines, the points upon which we go ahead and project down with our construction lines. And then we have essentially what we're going to need to do. I'm just going to do this freehand so you can see it. This line, well, I won't do it freehand because I can't draft freehand. I'm going to draft this one. It goes, this edge line is here, obviously. This other edge line is there, maybe not obviously, and we're going to go ahead and learn slowly how to use these machines. It's worthwhile to get back here one day and do a little bit of drafting. They're not bad. Again, you can catch them up for 50 bucks. You see that there. And once again, in this view, this will be a dash line as well. On the color one, I think it does. Is it the drum or the... And there you have it, kind of bad dash lines here. So that is identification of these lines. What you have are the object lines, the dashed or hidden lines. You have a really important concept here is the light box line. You have the reverse pool shot line, and you'll see later if you get into kind of different projections, you can kind of play around with that reverse pool shot line. Uh, what I want to do, however, is I'm going to take this to my office now and scan it use raster, rasterization software, and so we can skip the step of having to draft it with the computer. Get it into 3D. We'll see how this works. I went 1028. Not bad. Hope you're doing well. Talk to you later. Bye.